So first thing I'm going to do is just, a, it, I call this pass the beat. It's a whole range of pieces. It's, uh, it's a very, very simple idea that can lead to, to uh, other ideas, offshoot ideas, and can get very complex as well. Going to start in, the, in one of the most simple ways, using our hands. Okay, can we all clap? Or I'd, I'd like you to just clap at the same time as me. Are you ready? How do we know? Let's try that again. Okay, now try that with your eyes closed. Isn't that strange? So we're going to send this beat, we're going to pass this beat around the room. I'm going to go to my left, I'm just going to clap, and if you can point the direction of the clap, we're going to send it around the room so that it comes back to me, and then it will probably keep going. Here we go. So and we might talk about what we notice. So there's a pulse happening there. It's pretty even. It doesn't have to be. And also, I might, I'm just thinking I might talk as we're making music. And if that becomes a problem online, that it gets too confusing in terms of sound, just let us know. And I'll um, change that behavior. Now we're going to try as a sort of wake up activity. We're going to go in this direction to the right. We're just going to pass this clap as fast as we can. OK? Just going to zoom around the room. Here we go. You ready? And back the other way. Get the idea. So I could run, I could run around quicker than that. And, and quite often, if I'm working with young kids, I would do that. Um, so let's go back to setting up a little pulse with this. We're going to send the beat round to the left again. Uh, here we go. And at any point, you can change direction but try and maintain the pulse. Make it real clear the direction you're sending it. You've got more time than you think. Woo. So all sorts of things going on. And as we're going, think about how you might apply some of this thinking and these techniques. And some of you already will be, I know. But just think about how you can introduce some of these ideas. There's all sorts of things going on, reaction times, how we clap, um, and, and how that links to, to, to our instruments and all that sort of stuff. We can do it, dare I say, we can do it quite quietly vocally. I'm going to make a little vocal sound. You can do the same one if you want. You can make your own little sound. We're going to try and make it go around the circle. It doesn't have to be in time. Here we go. <laughs> ah, so. Then we get into the whole communication thing, what, um, which direction we're going in and being clear about all that. So moving this on very, very quickly. Uh, physically, it can be done really nicely. Here we go. Are you ready? And now we're not necessarily going around the circle. Are you ready? Here we go. And I wonder what the people online are actually seeing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Theatrics and expression and exploring the link between um, music making and physicality, which is, I think, oft quite often overlooked. And I know that most of you working with young people will know that movement, even in your session one-to-one, -one, facing each other, movement is important and useful. Thank <laughs> you.
da casa. Che buono. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't had it yet? Who hasn't had the noisy one yet? So being, I mean, we're in silly territory, but there's also a link to using our voices, and we tend to do that quite naturally when being silly. And as long as we're taking care, it's a really interesting way into using the voice. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's just take some of these ideas, and with a bit of junk percussion, that you should have a nice one of my select pieces under your chair. Just have a quick explore, find a long ringing sound, find a dead sound, just have a little, uh, a little play with it. Find ways of making it work. Okay. So let's... <laughs> That's a good idea, I like that. So what we do, we just go back to the very beginning and just send a beat around the room, okay? And we're not too worried about the pulse, what we could be. We could be focusing on keeping it in time. We could be playing at different tempos. Uh, but for now, let's just pass the, the, the beat, the sound, around the room. Nice. So it's interesting, isn't it? Think about what's going on for you. These are, these are simple things, they're percussion instruments really, but they're new and they're fresh. And on some level, you're experiencing that thing of being new to an instrument and what happens. And plus the process that you're doing, like we're forgetting which direction it's going on. This is all real musical stuff. It's, it's fundamental stuff, uh, being able to make eye contact, to be able to communicate, not just through playing, but what, what you're trying to express. All this is rich stuff, I think. Uh, let's, let's try and send one around the room really fast. Here we go, I'm gonna go to the left. Okay, find a really dead sound. Okay, now find a long ringing sound. Okay, so now we're going to pass it around just as an idea. We're going to choose. So if you do a short sound, if I do a short sound, you would do your sound, whatever it could be, short or long. But if it's a long sound, you've got to wait until the sound finishes before the beat moves along. Yeah? Here we go. We're going to go to the right this time. Okay, so again, we could go on for ages, but uh, and there's in this room there's quite a lot of background noise, and plus the children. Um, so the relative silence is quite di it's quite difficult. But some of you were really listening for when that sound ends, um, and it can get quite intense. That's one of the directions that this piece can go in. Um, taking the idea, one of the ideas where we're starting to pass the beat across the room. We'll try that now. Okay, here we go. 
who would like to start? Okay, and let's speed this up. Let's get it, let it go and go around the room as fast as we can. Somebody start. <laughs> yeah, we've got quite a lot of distance between us, so we have to... Okay, and just as a little thing, uh, just um, picking up on what you did, um, this time we'll pass, we'll pass the beat. We'll, we make a sound with a, a vocal sound at the same time. Okay, so here we go. And we make it, if necessary, point where it's going. I'll start this one. Here we go. Boing! Thank you. So all sorts of things going on there, do, making a sound at the same time that we're hitting a beat is going to be a challenge for some people. For example, there's all sorts of layers and levels to this stuff. If we can now move this on, just as a, to, to, ra to round it off by putting it onto whatever real instrument, real instrument we've brought today. Two recorders, uke there, uke, <laughs> violin, violin, uh, another violin, keyboard, a guitar, guitar, and a saxophone. Okay. So we'll go back. We'll start it the way we did. Uh, we'll go round maybe to the left. And any note. Any note you want, you can even be percussive with your instrument, don't worry about that at the moment. Uh, just f free yourselves to, um, yeah, just make a sound. So we're just passing, a, passing the beat around, or a sound in this case. Here we go, to the left. All right, let's try one as fast as we can then, okay? Who's going to start? Anywhere in the room. Again, 
Uh, endless variations, you can introduce a voice to that as well. You could in introduce a selected scale, you could use certain kinds of chords, you could have something underneath just bedding it all down or holding it while the things happen. Let's just try as a way of ending it, let's just try, um, I'm going to just play a long note, a sustained note on my, on my guitar. You play a sustained note, it's comfortable, and just move it around. So we're not too worried, just, it's going to build up a texture basically. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So let's think of this as a little piece. This is a, we're performing this to, the, um, to them. Let's do it. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. <laughs> so I started to break the rules there as well, just by introducing other sounds, because I like that. Nice one. Okay, let's put those down. And so passing the beat, very, very flexible, can go to all sorts of places. It does work one-to-one -one as well, um, particularly with a focus on ex either expression, as in you know, playing a, a bunch of things or playing, f playing something that you're comfortable with, and then the other person playing something back. And we're going to sort of take that idea now and move it, um, move it on. This is a kind of a range of pieces called, uh, I, I call this conversation. Conversation. Um, so there are all sorts of ways of doing this, but essentially it's putting, um, putting an emphasis on the idea that you know, two people are having a conversation, um, we might be talking, in this case we're not. We're going to express ourselves through our instrument. And what tends to happen, particularly when using percussion instruments, certainly, um, is that people will start to improvise quite naturally, quite freely, without telling them to, is, is really what, what the key to this is. So, yeah, this is conversations. I'm, I'm going to set this up. Uh, very quickly in the middle, um, and I'd well, I'd like maybe one volunteer to start with. We can sort of demonstrate this, maintaining social distancing, if we can. Volunteer. So we're going to have a conversation, but we're not going to use our voices. We'll put a full stop on it by 
simply playing at the same time together. Are you ready? More or less. <laughs> okay, lovely, thank you. So I don't know what people can see when we're doing that, but um, okay. So I could have looked, looked at the screen at any point, couldn't I? Um, so how was that? Cool. What did you notice? Yeah, did it, it, you weren't worried about what you had to play? No. No, okay. Um, and I think the eye contact thing is really important. Quite often, I mean, there's some, I know I've seen many of you before, but quite often I'll use this, uh, I'll do this activity with two big or a couple of big plastic barrels that we might be bouncing, we might be really getting physical with it as well. That works very well. But of course, it does work with, with any kind of instrument. And sort of rooting, rooting uh, what we're doing in, uh, in communication. M music is a form of communication. And this kind of, this is the essence of it in a way. Uh, and of course it's also got a link to things like call and response and call and echo and uh, some of those ancient techniques. Should we have another, um, let's have another little duet in the middle. So a couple of people. Bring it to a close, just do something together. <laughs> nice one, okay, thank you. So, um, any thoughts? Mark? Yes? Um, just to say that if anybody else speaks other than you, they can't hear it. Oh yes, and I need so to... So if someone responds, if you can just say what yes. they said, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, yeah. I think after watching you both first, this will give me a few more ideas to think outside the box. Yeah. It could have been easy to just use the, the bowls normally, but yeah. flip them over. Yeah, so it get you, it basically it gets, seeing someone else do it gave you permission to yeah. try stuff out and to, it's uh, absolutely okay to explore. The other good thing about this, this, these kind of instruments is there aren't really any rules. Um, and they can be destroyed, and we have to manage, the, manage all that stuff, but at the same time, um, we're much freer to explore than we would be, say, if it was a guitar and we had nothing to do with a guitar. Any thoughts? Um, I was very interested to see how the response happened, you know, so sort of like um, hearing what the other person has to say and then how yeah. I was moved to mimic or answer. Yeah, so you were, you were, you were attending to what the other person was doing and, and quite literally responding to it and... Um, I mean, I did notice with the, the pair of you, you, I mean, I did stop it, and I, I wonder, I, I would prefer, much prefer to allow, to have allowed it to end, but because of time. Um, so, a question. Yes? What were the facial expressions, if any, did you use in, in, the, in the conversation, and did that help? S S it was eye contact, yep. a lot. Yep. And then thinking, I don't want to respond like that, or that's yeah. making me feel like. Yeah. 
So eye, eye contact is an important dimension of it as well. When we play together, I mean, I would, I would normally, I would get, I'd almost immediately get into making faces and starting to get a little bit more sort of communicative with my body as well, just to, just to lighten it really, and to allow the permission to join in. So it, I think it is, it is important, particularly if you're working with young people, um, and each young person is different, of course, and each group is different, and how far you are prepared to go. Yes, children would find that very difficult to do, yeah, without, without. Question. Yeah, um, question. I've got quite a few autistic spectrum people yeah. in the um, next groups. How does one, you know, sort of with eye contact, because that can be an issue with them. Yeah, well, so then it's, it's, it's uh, the expression horses for courses. But it's, um, I, th I think w with, au with autistic spectrum, you are, you know, eye contact can be one of the measures and can be one of the aims. So I think as long as it's gentle, I think the principle can be understood without making eye contact. In fact, it's quite a nice thing to do with eyes closed. Um, you know, on a, a purely musical level, it's quite, it's quite interesting to do that as well. Um, I, th I think time and time again, I've seen that piece work with all sorts of people uh, at, at a really intuitive level. And I think that's... that's that's the main thing about it for me. It gives people permission. It allows them to be expressive and explore in ways that they, they probably wouldn't on their own instrument or if, you know, if it was an inter uh, a proper instrument given to them. Any other thoughts? Okay, well, let's try, let's try putting um, conversations onto, onto our regular instruments. Let's see what happens. And we'll do, it, we'll do it across the room. So we'll keep it simple. I think it's uh, worth mentioning I really like using the circle. Again, that's a sort of search and reflect community music type practice that's certainly ingrained in me. You can kind of see everyone. <laughs> and uh, uh, th there's a sort of equality there. But I also really love to use the center of the circle to bring action in there, to focus attention. Of course, that can be very challenging for some people, but it's also use, very useful, very powerful tool. Um, so let's, I mean, there's all sorts of ways of doing this, but we could have, um, let's, let's actually set a little conversation up with a couple of volunteers. That, was that your? Oh, <laughs> going up. Yeah? Okay. I'll tell you what, let's try the, can we try the two violins? Do you know what? This is a baby viola. Yeah. I can hardly play it. I just grabbed it. Okay. <laughs> so you'll be in the, you'll be in the realms, realms of pure expression then. Just, okay. re, just respond in okay. whatever way you can. Stop that. You're getting, you're getting interesting. So, what's going on? How is that working? Kind of imitation. Imitation? Yeah. So, are you, are you sort of echoing what you're hearing? Yes, and then developing it a little bit. Okay, and then developing a little bit. So, what does that mean? How do you do that? Own ideas? Your own ideas? Yeah. yeah. yeah? But you're aware that you, you're not just echoing, that you're, you're perhaps adding a little tail onto the end of it. So there's something going on now. How was it for you? What? Uh, yeah, so I was trying to create slightly different sounds. Yep. Try. But also perhaps crossing certain rhythms. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Okay. <laughs> Lovely. That was a round of applause for that one, I think. <laughs> so, you know, it started to get, yeah, very nice. Yes, question? A question from the chat. Yeah. Um, did you feel there was a leader and a follower when you were doing that, or was it equal? I just made I I just made it up was the <laughs> was one of the answers there. Just like in a conversation, really, and without thinking about what that, the content of that conversation might be, you're responding, you're negotiating, you're communicating, you're taking... Sorry, when um, Janet was playing louder, that's kind of when she took over the conversation and then you were responding to what she was doing, and then when you'd made a loud sound, it kind of switched yeah. to whoever was the most... Yes. Yeah. So the, 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 the conversation in the room, the conversation in the room is about the yeah. There's a, you, you can you can be more expressive by being more you know adding, using more volume or being more pronounced in what you're playing, and that will provoke a response. Just like as if a shout, you start to oh hang on, and it's 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 all linked. It's very very pro, sort of primal and pure actually, and it's it, again to interrupt it is a shame because, and I know you're being watched, and that's strange. But there's a power in that too. There's nothing new about it. But it didn't seem in that moment that we were being watched. It was purely mm. a conversation. I, I, f I felt that, and whether the, the degree to which either of you felt that is, uh, yeah, that's, Me. yeah. I don't know about you. I was terrified the moment I arrived. You were terrified, <laughs> <laughs> you were terrified the moment you arrived, yeah. And so that's, that's true of you, and that's true of your students as well. It's, it's, it's always worth bearing that in mind. I mean, I... You know, I go, I go all over the place, do all sorts of things. And I really, I really, I really like making noise and sound. And I'm, you know, totally happy to do that. But I, and I do have to remember that, s that some people aren't. <laughs> and actually, a lot of my work is about getting people in the room in the first. And that can be a, you know, that's the main thing. Retention, keeping them there, making it interesting. Quite often, I'm in situations where I'm not necessarily working for, with people for very long which is a sort of bonus, and I recognise there are very particular challenges with keeping people returning. And I think some of these techniques, because they're quite playful, yeah, it, there's playfulness at the heart of them, they can be referred to time and time again. They can be placed in the context of learning something perhaps quite complex. Yeah? So let's have another, we've got time for one more, a couple more conversations, yes? Let's have, uh, let's try, <laughs> we try the ukes. Okay, I'm going to stop that one. Sorry to interrupt. Um, and I just want to say, while I remember this, I meant to say this before, of course, for some people, this would be extremely challenging. They would be very uncomfortable expressing. So, it, of course, it, then it might just be a matter of what repertoire do they have, what, t what skills do they have on a uke or a drum kit or whatever, uh, and just uh, um, giving them permission to try those out in this context. But what tends to happen time and time again is that people will explore their instruments in a way that they wouldn't if you ask them to. Yeah? So it's a quite a natural way into that. D did you have any thoughts about what happened for you there? No, it's just kind of normal conversation, really. Felt quite natural to do? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it looked like you were enjoying yourselves as well. <laughs> yeah. Let's I tell you what, let's just try one more thing. Um, how many of two, two, four, six, eight? Yeah. So let's, you and I are going to have a conversation. You two are have a conversation at the same time. Conversation at the same time. On the saxophone will be fun. 
uh, conversation at the same time again, and you too. So we're all going to be having com in, in our pairs, just having a conversation. But s really focus in on who you're talking to in the, in the sound that was created. Yeah, and then start to listen to the whole. And then maybe, maybe we all start to have a group conversation. We'll see. Here we go. So let's just uh, give ourselves a round of applause. This is <laughs> it's a convention. Yes? If you're in a, a teaching situation, yeah. say one-to-one -one or a small group, how do you have the confidence to bring it to an end the way you are doing <laughs> uh, if you haven't done it much or if, if you think that the pupil has still a lot more to say? Uh, I think it, I think it's, it's really um, it's just relates to the amount of time that you've got and how how, how much uh, how important it is to allow it to 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 blossom, um, and I, th I think as I mean I, I know what I want to hear and I want to see and I also know what I want to say so I'm using that as a gu as a guide really um, the com the confidence I think it's just a matter of doing it <laughs> I know it's a really annoying thing to say probably but it's yeah, I, th I think if you root it in what, what it is you're trying to achieve, and you might know that, you might know that better than your student, or you might have negotiated it with your student. So you're just making those sorts of decisions, really. Uh, any thoughts about, about what happened then as a group? I wasn't really listening to anyone else, to be honest. Okay. I was just focusing on... Everything. Yep, and that's fine. I mean... The, the idea was that we started there and then we start to listen to the whole and then we start to interact. We start to reflect what else is going on in the room. Much harder than in the big group. Much, much harder? Yeah. Why? Um, because I think none of us knew quite where those conversations go. Yeah. yeah, so that would improve over time, just like any group. Yeah. I think the loudest instrument possibly led the way. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it did. It definitely had a, had a major influence. But there were all, for my, for my ears, there were all sorts of things influencing our conversation, mainly because I was having a conversation with someone who's almost silent. It's like a, and, and that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Uh, if, if, we were, if we were doing this really purely, this instrument, the electric guitar that's not plugged in, would be our, our not our bass line, but our sort of volume level. That's what we should be working. We should be able to hear that at all, all times, which is incredibly difficult and a real discipline. So we might, uh, and I like that discipline, but we might also might, might get you plugged in. Okay, maybe, maybe for the next bit, it'd be fun. I think you can exert some force there as well. Yeah. 
that we're rushed, that would take time, it would definitely happen. And in fact, one of the activities we've got later will, will, will open that up a little bit. Yeah, so conversations, communication. So we started today, we started today in terms of the activity with pass the beat, passing the beat and all those sorts of uh, variations, the physical variation, the moving things around the room, the eye contact, the uh, expressing in a really kind of simple form, um, reflexes, fun and laughter, really important. Um, being allowed to make mistakes, really important. Um, then, yes? Question. Yeah. Um, from Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Is this on? Great. So I don't need to shout. Great. Oh. Um, so Ruth asks, um, sometimes students find total freedom like this quite overwhelming. Yeah. And how do you deal with that? Yeah, I, I think uh, normally I'd be doing this in a group setting uh, and not necessarily in, uh, within the context of a structured uh, sort of instrumental learning session. So that opens it up instantly. And as I say, quite often I'm in situations where it is about what we do together and it's new and fresh. So um, I think it's, it's really just about paying attention to who your student is, maybe talking around, around it, what's possible, but also not, not talking, just trying some things out. If you're working one-to-one -one with something like conversations, um, you can just start and see what happens. And if, if it doesn't flow, if the idea doesn't flow, then maybe speak about it and introduce a couple of ideas that limit w your engagement. So it could be a couple of notes or a strumming technique or a, you know, a particular chord on the piano or a, or a bowing technique. So then just sort of bring the parameters down that you've got to work with and that should sort it out. With the caveat that not everyone digs this kind of stuff anyway. It's not necessarily appropriate for everyone. But in my experience, it's a fantastic way into exploring the instrument uh, and, 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 and some, some basic musical ideas. And I, what I totally forgot, have we got time to just, I would really like we, people to do one of these with someone online? A conversation? Sorry. I, to hand who's willing to come on screen and off mute. This is a last minute request that shows we're live. Indeed. I wonder if anybody's. Uh, we could always set that up really, for after really the break brave. if that's easier. There's some noises coming. Laszlo's. Laszlo, you're, you're flashing like you've come off mute. Are you going <laughs> to take. Are you, come on. Are you going to do it, Laszlo? Hello. Hi, Laszlo. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hello, ben. Laszlo. So you're going you're to have a conversation with someone in the room, uh, okay. but with your instrument. What instrument do you have? Piano. Excellent. Uh, can, we, can we go saxophone versus Sorry, piano? I have my piano. I haven't got my, I, I'm in a room where, where I haven't got a piano at the moment. Oh, okay. Has anybody got an instrument with them online? Nick, you've come on. Uh, have you got an instrument, Nick? Come on, Nick. Oh, it's very quiet. Who have we got? Ian. Hi, Ian. You look Hi like you've got some Morning. instruments behind you, Ian. I've got loads of them. Excellent. This is going to be like so drums. exciting. Drums. drums is the best instrument, according Brilliant. to my eight-year-old son. <laughs> okay. So I, I think uh, drum, drums uh, on the ether and, and saxophone. I think that would be great. James, if you turn around, this will, it will see you. Okay, how, how is it going to work? This with the, the yeah, this uh, delay and things like that. Right, let's hear it, Ian. Okay, to start a conversation.
And relax. <laughs> Fabulous. That deserves a round of applause. And uh, it's uh, extra brave of me to come on in my shorts. You see, I'm sitting here and I just realised I'm not really appropriately dressed. Thank you very much. So I was tempted, I was tempted to, to interject with the words, please have an argument now. And just to see why, but I didn't. I, I resisted. So thank you very much for that. Okay, should we going to have a um, going to have a little coffee break now? I think we're going to come back, then come back and do a couple of other uh, other pieces. Um, thank you for uh, joining. It's great. Should we say ten minutes? So we're going to look at a little piece now, which is um, a way of. Uh, it's kind of more structured than some of the, the ideas that we've been looking at in that it, it, it will focus on a specific kind of tempo and pulse and beat. Um, a, a, and it's, it's a space in which to, to uh, create a space in which to improvise, but with the, with the notion that you might be uh, actually composing something. So I'm going to call this drum, for want of a better word. Um, and I'm going to run through the uh, kind of really quickly the sort of pro process or procedure for sort of setting it up quite quickly. It's um, going to base it on a four beat counting. I'm not sure whether at the moment whether I'm going to use a four beat space or an eight beat space, so that will become clear. So simply together, I'm going to count in and I'd like us all to clap on the one of four and then repeat. So I'll demonstrate. It's obvious, but I'll demonstrate one, two, three, four. You have? I like that. And we're going to, what we're going to try and do is make the space in between silent. We're going to try and hold the pulse nice and accurately together in our heads and in our bodies, but without tapping. Yeah, it's just so that it's really there. So I'm going to make the count in as clean and as uh, accurate as I can. Here we go. So we're all clapping on the one. One, two, three, four. Okay, nice. I'm going to do a different tempo now. I'm going to count in a little bit quicker just to give you a heads up. And I thought if you can, try this with your eyes closed. Okay, so pick up on the tempo and then we'll just let it settle. Here we go. I'm going to count the numbers. I'm just giving you that to help you. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to stop it again. We would play with these ideas a bit longer normally. What's going on? What are you noticing? Are we clapping at the same time? Yeah. Exactly. So not completely, not to, no. And that, what? Not quite. Sometimes it's a really, really special sound of a bunch of people clapping at the same time. It's really rarely, actually. Um, and that's a detail. But at the same time, so what's going on? How are we holding the pulse? How do we do that? Some of us use conductors. Some of us use drum, drummers. Some of us, some of us just know. Some of us use metronomes. All right, the, the messing with, not messing with time, but the, uh, introducing the idea of timekeeping and how we do it, the autonomy of that, it's a really powerful tool. 
You can, you can explore in all sorts of ways. It's fantastic. And you can physicalize it as well. And you can, you, you can help keep the group in time by gesturing and conducting. Um, and we might look at some conducting techniques towards the end of today. Uh, so um, I would like someone else to count in. Again, with eyes shut, if we can, uh, being aware that not everyone likes to have their eyes, eyes closed, it can be a real gesture, but I'm just going with, uh, going to push this as hard as we can. Who would like to count in nice and evenly, get us going? You will? Okay. One more. Someone uh, just do a nice slow one. Real nice, painful, slow count in, please, from someone. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to stop it there because ah, that's hours of fun. I love that. So if you're really being true to yourself, for me, you are all speeding up. I might be right, I might be wrong. But if we were pushing that idea, I mean, there's a lovely piece of it. In fact, let's just, let's just try it. Did we just stand? I know this is probably really boring to listen to um, out there, but let's, it's just worth trying it, okay? I'm going to count in four. This time we're going to, count on the, we're going to clap on the one of eight, all right? And just keep repeating it. And just be true to the count in, okay? I'm gonna give you a little click to set the pulse up. It's a little bit faster than that. All right, and then I'll count in. So we'll count, if we have four beat count in, one clap, clapping on the one of eight, and just keep going and be true. Doesn't matter what happens in the room, we're not trying to agree, just be true to it. This is the pulse, yeah? Eyes closed if you can. Nice clear count in. One, two, three, four. I'm going to stop it again. Let's sit down. Hours of fun, uh, if you like. Then you, you extend that to 16, all right? You've got this huge silence, which you have to tolerate, okay? Uh, and once you add instruments into that, it can be, get very, very interesting in terms of texture. But just holding that pulse and being pure. And what is it about anyway? What is time? Is a metronome honest? Is it true? Is it really time? Is it the time we make together? Yeah? Um, so, drum, okay, here we go. Going back to the four, here's a nice quick count in. One of four. One, two, three, four. It's going to make it easy for us, holding the pulse down nice. Okay, this time we've got eight beats space, going to count in more or less the same tempo. We clap on the one, choose one other number. Yeah? Got your number in your head? You know what you're going to do? Thinking ahead? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay. You all got two? You got your one and your other number of eight. This time we're going to say the numbers, okay? So just say them, say your number as it obviously we're all going to say the one together and whatever number we're saying, we're, we're playing on. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. 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 
Sorry, sorry. Get the idea? And different, layer, different levels of complexity, and obviously we're on the beat at the moment, and you start to think about the in-between the beats, and it quickly becomes uh, complex and interesting. Uh, let's just put that straight away onto our instrument. So those two numbers that you are playing, let's turn that into a musical piece in the sense of instrumentation. Um, let's not worry about the notes. Choose a chord, just something you're comfortable with. Perhaps a single note rather than a chord, actually, just for now. So you're playing on the one. We're all playing on the one and whatever other number that we've chosen. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah? So already it sounds, I mean, it's, it's someone used to refer to it as squeaky bonk music, but it's, it's, it's at the same time, so if we were to use a selected scale, it would start to sound differently. Can we all, let's all play the same note. Should we just try that, see how it sounds? Play the same note on the one, and um, one note higher on your other. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay, so we're all going to play the same note, which let's, we say C for the one. Okay. <laughs> and then for your and for your other number, a semitone up. Yeah. So we're always coming back to the C on the one. Yeah. Close enough. That's good. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, I did it wrong myself. I'm going to start again. Here we go. Oh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay. Get the idea? So it's... Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you're, you're actually learning how to play your instrument in the context <laughs> under pressure, which I think is great. <laughs> well, the way a student might cope with that is... is, is a, a, a it's much easier when you've got the tune, because it gives you, those, it yeah. gives you the timing. Yes, yes, it gives you the timing. You know where, you, you know where you're going to fit in. You know where to fit in. Yeah. Can we just, as a little thing, make that second note, choose any note you want for the second note that you're playing. Um, but make it a sustained note. So make it at least a beat long. You go longer if you want. Yeah? That makes sense? Yeah. But always coming back for the one, just so we know where we are. It could be that we're all coming back to the four. You get a different, layer, <laughs> different uh, amount of challenge. Here we go. Um, so all on the C for the one. And a sustained second note, whatever you've chosen to do. Here we go. One, two, three, four. starting to take a shape, okay? So we could call that, you know, we could call that our A section, we could call that our verse or our chorus, which um, let's, call it, let's call it A. Yeah, we know where we are with that. That's, that's A. So that's what we come back to. We're going to do that four times. And then we're simply going to stop for a count of eight beats, total silence. Then we're going to come back in with our A section. Yeah? So adding layers of, of structure here. Here we go. Um, normally I'd be sharing out the counting in, but we're just driving it forward. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Mm. 
stop it there. So, um, yeah, that's our structure. Uh, so we've got our A section and our B section, which is only eight beats long, okay, which is silent at the moment. Um, and I think we could say that we can play on the one of that eight. It will help just uh, make it work a bit more securely, given that we're moving quite quickly. Yeah. But now in that eight beat space, we're gonna we're gonna try and run this now as a piece. All right, we get one go at it, I think. Gonna count in. We know our A section. In the first um, in the first B section, I'm gonna do a little solo. I'm gonna fill it with some nonsense. All right, I'm gonna express myself in that space. We're gonna come back in, the A section, and it's your turn. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And uh, so as a piece, it will just run all the way around, and then we do the chorus, the A section, one final time together, the end. Yeah? Okay, and then we'll have a quick chat about it. So I'll, I'll do the first solo. You don't have to do the first one. I'll do the, you do the second one. Everybody ready? Clear? Um, and go for it. Go for it in that space. Just know where you are. And we'll help you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
Well done. <laughs> Successful. So, um, yeah, thoughts? I've got a yeah. It's the most relaxing CPD day I've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite chill, wasn't it? It was so chilled out. It's not chilled out if you're sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> it's around the circle. When it's getting nearer and nearer, your blood pressure yeah. goes out of So, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It, it totally is. And normally, I would do there would be duets first or trios first, so there's that security. But you're all musicians, you can cope with it. And actually to feel... Worse, what? Expectations. Expectations, yeah. To actually play well. Or, or do, do something that sounds okay, not right. right yes. Um, what do you mean, when you're on your own? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yeah, there's that, yeah, absolutely. It's hugely stressful. Uh, I, I, I totally, yeah. And well I think that my, my take on that, playing in front of your peers and being stressed by it is good for you. <laughs> but, and, and in some ways, I mean, I would say if, if it's something you can barely play, then you're at sort of an advantage, uh, maybe, and that you can be free about it. Yeah, no, I think it is, yeah. yeah. As someone was saying in the break, was, you were saying how um, it puts you back into the seat of the pupil. Yeah. You really feel... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But you do know, but there's that huge pressure. It is really good to, to remember it. Sorry? It's good fun. It's good fun as well. We are making music, and I did feel it started to relax a little bit. I mean, we were secure in the A section, certainly. It kept coming back to that. And it felt to me like there were moments where, you know, people were being a little bit more playful and starting to interact. All this, I mean, it's structured. But actually, all it really is, in terms of my background and the reason for a piece like that, is it, it's a leap off into a free improvisation, where you know what the structure is, all right? You're really secure. You're just trying to hold your place. Then you relax and you allow yourself to ex be as expressive as you possibly can in that. And I think the, what, the way that relates to what we do as practitioners is being in the room and being you know, we're exposing ourselves to some degree. We've got to be there. We've got to be present. We've got many hats. We, um, we, we want people to come back. We want people to like us. We want to develop the relationships that we have with, with our students. So um, we can delve pretty deep into, into who we are and how we, how, you know, how we are with people. Um, yes, a question? Mark, um, just so we know, we've got about 15 minutes left. Great, thank you. So just... So we're aware. Yep. Um, a couple of questions coming in. Uh, what tasks would you suggest are most effective for a less confident teacher doing this kind of activity to start off with, to incorporate into their teaching as a kind of a first step, particularly in one-to-one -one lessons? Um, I think of the things that we've used so far, I think passing the beat and using clapping or simple percussion or the instrument that you have, just that swapping, making eye contact, having a laugh, actually, I think is really, really important. Um, something like with a more structured piece like drum, it's just exploring that four beat space, that eight beat, eight beat space. Um, my personal sort of approach is always to go for laughter uh, as, a, as a, you know, the entry point, if you like. Let's have some fun. Let's play. Let's play, let's be playful. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that would be my sort of, keep it simple, keep it direct, keep, it's about developing a relationship. It's no different from anything else, really, uh, in terms of how we, you know, how we relate to one another. Uh, I don't know if that's helpful. I think that is. Yeah. Uh, I've got more questions. Um, in terms of the improvisation section, uh, this, this actually, it's relating to the question I'm going to ask in a minute, but... Is there a reason you chose eight beats rather than four? As in, does it give you more time to prepare or something? Um, I think well, it's. I, I think my main my main thinking is that it it's half the length of the other section. So you then have to. You're not necessarily relying on your instinct straight away. You do have to sort of count it if you're new to those th breaking those spaces up. So I think it's important. If you wanted to simplify it, I mean, it could be um, it could be the same length as the. The A section, that would also mm. be helpful. Right. Um, so um, in terms of uh, the question that, that linked to that, was there's often an, uh, 
quite a lot of musical knowledge of melodic shape and rhythmic balance and 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 phrase length and things like and kind of making a musical sense almost right. and a slight pressure in particularly older children to make m sense about what they're doing so how 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 do you incorporate those kind of reservations perhaps in particularly older students yeah so every student is different and mm. i think it's um it's i mean for example we talked about this a little bit already selected scale what are they really good at what what technique do they need to i mean i tend to i tend to think in terms of guitar so um i mean not that i do much guitar teaching anymore but if there was a, you know, a certain element that i thought would be good to put in that context then i would get them to focus on that rather than leaving it totally free. Mm. But I would also, you know, gen generally as a, as, a, as a practice, just say, look, just, just try anything. And quite often in that setting, like if we were using a group of ukuleles with whole ukuleles, might fill that space with just playing on the backs of the ukuleles, tapping a rhythm out, feeling the space and filling the space in a way that makes sense. I think it's creating a circumstance in which people can make mistakes, it's allowed, that's really important. It's okay, um, but just to have the experience of filling that space in a meaningful way, let's say, and in an expressive way. And, and uh, my tendency would be to go, be, be to go to overdo that rather than simplify it. But then that do, I know that doesn't fit everyone. Uh, another way of making that improvisation space secure is just say, well, okay, it's one note, one note. Just hold that one note for that one space. You can play on every beat if you want. You can use your creativity to work out what any small group or individual might need, what, what might, might serve them. I think it can be a little bit problematic using the word improvisation as well, just because it means so many different things to different people. But I think if it's linked to communication, to expression, to exploring your instrument, that really helps. At the end of the day, I think we're trying to well, in any musical situation, even this one, where we're learning, if you like, I, I'm, I'm really interested in the music that we make. I think it's good to have that musical moment. And I felt a couple of musical moments there. It felt like it was working as a piece. And then my next thought is, oh yeah, if we did that, if we did that, if we did that, or we could take it there. Yeah? Does that make sense? Question of my own, yes. but not for you, Mark. For the people in the room and also yep. on, on the on the on the call, is how do you think you would incorporate what you've learned so far today into your own teaching? Have you got more more ideas, or would you be more confident in trying something like this out? Or do we need to spend more time doing it and, and, and experiment even more? That's a genuine question for everyone. I've had quite a few ideas, especially this particular one. Yeah. Making themselves look stupid. <laughs> permission to look stupid is. Yeah. I know, of course, some people don't need that permission. Some people need. Some people need to be stopped. You know, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> I, I would also say we're rushing. We're rushing. I mean, I think they yeah. take your time. A little bit at a time. Introduce the idea. You know, the four beat space one week, and then come back to it. Uh, so, you know. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, the reflection for me is I've, I've been around to see what other people do, obviously, as much as I can um, recently. Um, and I think what, I, what I've seen in different areas, in different, particularly with first access, but also with ensembles, is this kind of activity can really bring the ensemble back together in the, when you're back face to face. I've seen lots of kind of diff these types of activities being done as a warm up or as a way to reintegrate people into the into the group, as it kind of more harmoniously. So it's, it's really great to, to kind of yeah. to see the different options as well. I think that's been one of yeah. my reflections. To, to I mean, I think that is certainly something I said at the top. I think it's these are anchor points. They're te they're techniques as much as they are pieces, and you can use them, come back to them, and they are grounding. They are. You know, once you've got the language and the vocabulary sorted with each individual or your groups, they know what it is. It's a bit like, you know, you know what this means. If there's a whole bunch of noise in the room, some people use that technique. 
and then everyone puts their hands up and it's silent. It's just a way of bringing people back. There's a comment from Emma. Hello, Emma. Um, I can really see my first access groups loving these ideas. Um, right from the start, where they are introduced to the instruments and then developing as they become more confident. So it's, it's a real, what I think what she's saying is it's a nice way to bring people to a new instrument yeah. for the first time in a, re in a way that develops their confidence more, more quickly, potentially. Yeah, yeah. I, I see. I mean, that reflects on, on, what, on your experience where you've got, you know, you've got something new for the first time or, or you're, you, know, you maybe understand it, but you, yeah, you put it in a framework. And you're not necessarily being observed. You're just, you know, you're in the sound together and uh, we're sort of helping one another. Um, and I think the idea of creating that, you know, which I think is partly what you were saying about that space where it's that your turn is coming round, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a powerful thing and not, not, to be, not to be misused, I think. And certainly we need to feel what that's like <laughs> and remember it's not easy for everyone. But it is a goal and useful. Okay, there's a, the, the final piece I was going to do is just call it, we can do this really quickly. It's called click, click and color. So on your, let's go straight to, hold on to your instrument. Um, find, uh, find in our own space, in our own time now, just a few moments, take a few moments to find the shortest possible sound that you can. Ideally pl playing conventionally, but finding the shortest, crispest sound that you can. Really precise, a click. Okay, so just take a few moments to do that together. Yeah, no, as you go on, do it, do, do it. Yeah, go. Really, really crisp, really short, as short as you can imagine. Then make it even shorter. Okay, and it needs to be, it need, there needs to be an edge to it. It needs to be, there needs to be a volume to it. So it's got some force to it, okay? Okay. All right, let's just go, well, we'll just test it very quickly. Uh, we take more time to do this. Let's, we go around to the right. I'm going to play my click, you play your click. All right, it's the same again, even shorter, but more energy. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to choose a different thing. <laughs> All right, so as short as your sound is, you're, you're trying to create as much energy and force in that tiny little sound as you can, yeah? Yes. All right, so um, now, that's our click sound. Now find something with color. And with color, you're, you're looking at the reason you, pl you, cho you chose your instrument. And I, I know you may not be on the one that you've got, okay? What's the most beautiful thing about it? So find that now. Just explore in your own space and time, except I'm going to rush it. So you're looking for something beautiful, something expressive, something that really rings true for you, that means something, that connects you to your instrument, okay? And I know we're rushing it and we would take more time, but do it, do it, do it. So what is it? Okay. All right, so moving on, we've got our click and we've got our colour. <clears throat> now, we'll run this piece, we'll do it once. So this is the way it will work. We're going to listen. We're going to start from total silence, or it's relative silence. We've got various hum, we've got children, all sorts of clicks. We've got our body noise. Just rest there for a moment. Start with the clicks. Every time you hear a silence, a relative silence, click. If you hear someone else play, don't play. All right? You're trying to fill the silence with these clicks, so we should hear. We won't, but that's what we're aiming for. We're trying to fill that silence independently, okay? Not playing with anyone else, only on our own, okay? It's really intense. We're going to fill it. Then, after a little while, somebody, somebody will go for the space. They'll go for the silence and they'll own it with their beautiful sound. And we focus in. We try not to interrupt. 
When that sound is gone, we're back into silence. We're clicking away until someone else takes that space. All right? Really intense rushing here. Okay? This, this, this should take us about 20 minutes to get to this space of thinking. All right? But really using our ears, really focusing. Try it with your eyes closed. Okay? So we're focusing on the silence, filling it with clicks until someone owns that space with their beautiful sound. Okay, from silence, eyes closed, deep breath. Okay, so uh, strange way to end, but um, I think it's worth just reflecting a little bit that getting your ears attuned to that kind of silence, I mean, that it's, if you came back to that activity with a, a, a group of willing participants to really do that purely and only play in the space that is actually there, you could spend a lifetime trying to get that right. And there's an intensity. It really does tune the listening up up to, to a really acu acute degree and then filling that space that with with the beauty that you're all capable of and allowing yourselves to do that is a really liberating experience we can't do just it, justice to it in terms of the peace that it is in this time but the principle is there the idea is there for you to use and to take away so um i think Great. Hopefully that's been useful. It's been really great being in a room <laughs> with people and making some sound. So and thank, you for, thank you for participating in the way that you have done. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a round of applause again for Mark. Thank you. Hey, it's coming through the thing. Um, Ross Lanning, Mark is an absolute genius. Joe Howard, sounded great. Rachel loved it. Rachel Curzon, same ones. Uh, yeah, so lovely, lovely things coming through. Um, thank you very much, Mark. Um, what